I'm going to go through parts of this section really fast. So molecules travel in a straight line until they run into something. The average distance that they can travel is called the mean free path. So the mean free path, how far does an average particle travel before it runs into something? As, as um, the pressure increases, the particles are closer together and the mean free path is going to decrease. Just, you know, as a larger scale illustration, if nitrogen, the main component of air, was the size of a golf ball, it would travel about 40 feet between collisions. So if you can imagine, you know, golf balls zinging around the room 40 feet before they run into something. Let's make sure I didn't skip something. Yeah. So here are two um, concepts, diffusion and effusion. And there are questions that show up about this on the ACS final. Um, so if you're one of those students that are really trying to get an A, then you need to know what diffusion is and what effusion is. So diffusion is where a gas is going to spread out from a, a high concentration to lower concentration. So this is kind of disgusting, but hey, I have five sons. So let's say someone up, in, up here by the board, because nobody's there, somebody farts, right? And they, who knows what they ate yesterday, but man, that's powerful, right? So he who smelt it dealt it, right? So it's, it starts over here, but are the people on the other side of the room going to smell it? Eventually, right, it's going to drift over there. That process is called diffusion. So it first comes out and it's really concentrated and then it diffuses because gases keep traveling in a straight line until they run into something. So, you know, some of them are gonna run into the chalkboard and bounce off, but basically they're gonna drift toward you guys, right? That's what diffusion is. Effusion is when a gas escapes from a container through a little hole into a vacuum. I think we've got a picture of that coming up. So the rates of diffusion and effusion are related to the root mean square average velocity. The faster those particles are traveling, the faster they're going to get across the room, right? So at the same temperature, the rate of gas movement is inversely proportional to the square root of its molar mass. And it's the square root because of that root mean square equation. Okay, so this is effusion, uh, Graham's law of effusion. So this is what effusion would look like. So we have this container with two separate sections, and originally there's gas in this side and there's no gas in that side. Nothing in here is a vacuum. A, a perfect vacuum, no particles, right? Over here, there are gas molecules, and there's a hole here that's large enough for gas molecules to get through. Now, what comes naturally to my mind is that these are gonna get sucked out, right? Because we've got a vacuum, it's sucking the particles out, right? Nope, no it isn't. These gas particles are oblivious to the vacuum over there. They're just zinging around, doing their thing. But every once in a while, one of them makes a direct hit on the hole and goes through, right? And then it's over here, zinging around. And it's not running into as many other gas molecules, but it's still just zinging around. What are the chances of it going back through the hole? Pretty small. And these guys, there's a whole bunch of them, they're still zinging around. And so there's a much bigger chance that these guys are going to hit the hole and go through than these guys over here. And if you wait, eventually you'll have the same number of particles in both sides, the same pressure in both sides. So how fast 
this gas goes through that hole into the vacuum depends entirely on how fast those molecules are moving. If they're moving faster, zing, 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 they have a much bigger chance of hitting the hole. And if they're going really slow, right, they're gonna make a whole bunch of bounces, right, before they hit the hole. So this is the mathematical statement of Graham's law of effusion. The rate of effusion of A, how fast it moves, the gas moves from here to here, divided by the rate of the other one is equal to the square root of the mass of the second one divided by the mass of the first one, those molar masses. So we see this in balloons. If you have two balloons, same kind of balloon, one's filled with helium and the other one's filled with air, the helium balloon is going to get small faster than the air balloon. Presumably, if you're filling them up to the same size, you've got the same pressure, same number of particles inside. Why do balloons go flat? Because the gas particles can get through the little teeny tiny pores in the latex material. There's little tiny holes. Why, why doesn't all the gas just come out right away? Well, because it's not just all whole, right? There's solid parts in between, and these gas molecules pretty much have to make a direct hit to go through a hole. So most of the time, they're just gonna bounce around. But helium's going to escape faster than nitrogen, like air, because helium has a lower molar mass. Its particles are moving faster its rate of effusion is going to be greater than the rate of effusion of nitrogen. So there you have it. That's the chemical explanation for why helium balloons go flat faster. Anybody have any questions? How do we do a problem like this? This is asking us to find the ratio of the effusion rate of hydrogen gas to that of krypton gas. So this is hydrogen to krypton is the ratio. It's specifying which direction it is. So we're looking at the rate of hydrogen divided by the rate of krypton. If they said the rate of krypton to hydrogen, then it would be reversed. So Graham's law of effusion tells us that this is related to their molar masses, the ratio of their molar masses, but it's opposite, right? The smaller particle, um, effuses faster and the larger particle effuses slower. So the krypton is in the bottom here, it's on the top over there. And hydrogen is on the top over here and it's on the bottom over here. Now when we looked at root mean square velocity, this molar mass was in kilograms per mole. Here we have a ratio of them. So the kilogram part cancels out, right? So we could do it in kilograms or we could do it in grams. So the molar mass of krypton is, that one's a little shiny in the back of my head, 83.80. 83.80 grams per mole for krypton. And for hydrogen, it's H2, right? That's not indicated here, but we have to remember that's one of the diatomic elements, H2, and so that's 2.016 grams per mole, square root of the whole thing. The units all cancel out, right, as long as we use the same. So we have the square root of 83.8 divided by 2.016. Um, we'll go with four sig figs here. So the rate is 6.447 to 1. 
So hydrogen effuses 6.447 times faster than krypton. Now there's kind of a useless piece of information, right? Any questions? <laughs>